Welcome to Inside the Skin, uh, and I'm your host, Aaron Maslianski. Today, we have the coronavirus edition. We have David Sutton back from Sutton Studios, and David uh, is on here today because he's going to talk to us about how he is helping people set up their backgrounds for their virtual studios, and David's been a huge help to me in this, and uh, thank you for being here. It's my pleasure, Aaron. It's always great ch chatting with you. I learn things every time. <laughs> Same here, for sure. And, uh, you know, it's, I think this conversation is indicative of where we are at because we are literally like two or three blocks away from each other right now. But we've got to do this over Zoom because of what's going on in the world. And there's people who, I, I feel like everyone's turned into a media producer right now, right? Yeah, for better or worse. <laughs> yeah. We've all got our little TV shows going on. Yeah, I always wanted to be a TV star, and now's your time, right? Exactly, on your mini screen. So what have you really noticed from people starting to, to do this and setting up their screens? Um, I noticed that a lot of people uh, have no idea um, what to do or how to do it. Um, it's, it starts, I mean, there are, there's a, a group, a, this class of people that's been doing online meetings for years. It's kind of a small percentage of the business world for whom this is just like, oh, okay, so now everyone else is on, big deal. But for the vast majority of people, we're, we're engaging with this technology for the first time. And when I first started attending meetings and getting together with people, um, I realized that I mean, I have done FaceTime with people, and when I'm doing FaceTime with people, before I start, and this is all before the explosion of this online communication, I would always look for a place that had a nice background and had good lighting and a place where I could put my phone, which I'm going to be calling camera from here out, yeah. and in a favorable position relative to me and the background and the lighting and all of that. But when I would see the other people on screen, I realized that this is not second nature for most people to have these considerations. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I started, um, it, you know, I, I want to do it for everyone, but not everyone wants to hear about it. Uh, not <laughs> but a lot of people do. And once I, I sent out a newsletter indicating that I was available to help people with this, I started hearing from a lot of different people with different particular needs. And your background, I mean, you're a photographer, so you have an eye, obviously, for uh, the picture. Yeah, one of the one of the most basic things that we do. I mean, as a photographer, I have just trained myself for many, many decades to notice light, light for example. Where is it coming from and what is it doing? Is there more than one source? You know, how is it affecting the person I'm looking at? And these are things I'm noticing in, in casual conversations with people anywhere. But the other thing that we as photographers have to train ourselves to do is recognize that your subject is not just here. Um, everything within this rectangle is going to be recorded. And so when we look through the viewfinder, we, of course we locate the subject, but then we kind of scour the screen and go corner to corner and side to side and see what else we're capturing if what we'll be capturing inadvertently if we're not paying attention. And this yeah. is the, the classic is a tree growing out of someone's head, you know. <laughs> and I think some people don't realize, you know, that, that if you're in sweatpants and things like that for a meeting, it may not be the best, <laughs> the best professional look. <laughs> or if you're wearing sweatpants and a nice shirt and jacket, don't stand up. That's <laughs> right. Just be careful. Yeah. Surprised at how many people I've seen who are talking to me from bed. It's like, okay, this is more than I need to know. <laughs> exactly. Casual. But I, I have uh, had people comment that, especially with, the, with what has happened to the job market, that people are going to be doing job interviews by Zoom for a long time. And that's a really important place to make a first impression. Yeah. You know, as a, as a business owner, um, when I would, uh, I mean, hearkening back to the days when resumes came in on paper, and even when they come on an email, if there are typos in the first two sentences, I don't read on. 
And no matter how well qualified you are, if somebody is looking at your image on, on, in this medium and they're seeing chaos and disorganization or a person who doesn't really pay attention to how they look or how they present, that's gonna make a much bigger impression than anything you say. I know, um, I, I have read that a very, a relatively small percentage of communication is actually the words we say. A lot has, there's much more weight given to visuals, facial expressions, micro expressions. Um, and in, in this medium, of course, background, what's behind you, the, whether people can even see you, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah, I find it funny when I see people that they don't realize that their half of their face is cut off or if they're looking or if the camera angle is looking down and then up at them. Right, right. It's not very flattering. I had one, one uh, friend tell me that he liked the low camera angle because he thought it made him look taller and dominant. <laughs> and th this friend has particularly large nostrils and that's all I was seeing. You know? <laughs> I, I gotta tell you, you know, you don't need to look powerful as much as you need for people to be looking at your eyes and not your nose. <laughs> right. Do you have some examples that you'd like to show us of what some people have looked like um, and then how you fix them up? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll run a little video for you by screen share here if I can figure out which one it is. Here it is. Here's a, just a really quick before and after reel. Oh, who's this guy? Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's so much better. <laughs> the virtual screens are great. Yeah. So I'm not trying to create something in the end that you're actually going to hang on the wall, but that's not really the, objec the objective. The objective is to get rid of clutter, um, show people in their best light, and more than anything else, help people to feel better about themselves when they're communicating in this medium. Yeah. And I think it's important also, I mean, I've done virtual backgrounds. I've been doing some interviews for uh, like the JCC and they've had me use their virtual background, which is fine. But I think that there's um, something ghostly about using them where well, they don't work that well. And in some ways, um, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a one liner that everyone has heard it you know it was funny for a moment um but the it's really distracting because the edges are never perfect um people's hair kind of appears and disappears and and i th i find them very distracting um although i i have i have one one friend um who's got a who's just got a particularly great sense of humor and we met recently he was he was um ostensibly sitting in front of this tomb to Colonel Harlan Sanders, the founder of Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's like, <laughs> okay, that's just weird enough that it works, but <laughs> yeah, large, I discourage it. Um, yeah. I agree. You know, I think one of the things that you've helped me with was, first of all, decluttering, and then figuring out how to set up my lighting around me so I don't have shadows. And, um, you know, so I'm gonna share my screen. and. I'll show you this. So basically, this is my setup where I have a, um, a stand for my computer where it can um, be lifted up so I'm eye level with my camera on my computer. It's helpful to have the second monitor. And then I've got the lamp that's up on a box. And then this other, um, I, I had this little light um, on the right there uh, from before that I was using for different video and now I just clip it onto that monitor and it gives me good light and then the other thing that I've done is I've marked it you could see the um I like the blue tape yeah it, but it, it tells me okay this is the position of where everything needs to be so I don't forget and I even have like up on my ceiling a little piece of blue tape to remember to unscrew that light bulb so I don't <laughs> get a, a shadow cast on me yeah. um so it's been really, really helpful, and I just keep that for each time, and I'm good to go. It's, it, and I feel confident when I'm going and having these meetings because 
I'm doing, I don't know how many Zoom calls a day, whether they be broadcast and recorded like this, or, you know, just a, a first initial meeting or something, or new clients I'm meeting with. I mean, that, I'm having all my initial consultations with new real estate clients over Zoom. And, uh, you know, when we're actually in person and we're in masks and everything, we're trying to get in and out as quickly as we can. Um, but when we're actually having a conversation, I want them, I, I want to feel confident. I want them to feel confident in my knowledge. And um, I think that comes off very well. It's, it's valuable. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I really, I want to, I want that photo that you just showed because that's really, um, that's going to be really useful. I want to show people what you did. Sure. I'll send it to you. No um, problem. No, I had this interesting um, realization this morning. Um, I ducked into a paint store to get some primer and came out and there was a woman passing on the street and I realized how much I rely on my smile to put people at ease. And it, I started thinking how dramatically wearing masks um, is going to be a, going to affect our nonverbal communication with strangers on the street. You yeah. just you can especially if people are walking by wearing sunglasses and a mask. You've you've got almost nothing to go on. Yeah. So I, I realized. I mean, I'm, I started wondering if we're going to have to come up with a substitute for a smile. That's something you know, like body language, some some sort of happy nod, or I don't know. But uh, um, I I you know, I'm relatively tall and I don't like to feel like I'm intimidating. Um, and so I, you know, I just had this realization how much I count on my smile to put people at ease and it's not visible. In fact, I had a, um, a meeting like this recently with a woman that I have met very briefly at the appropriate distance wearing masks. And she said, oh, you have a beard. <laughs> <laughs> You wouldn't have seen that, would you? Because the mask fits like almost perfectly over that. Yeah, you'd have no idea. Yeah, I was riding my bike um, the other day and I, I had a mask on and, you know, it's it's tricky. It's like, when do you wear the mask? When do you not? When do you not? But anyways, I'm, I'm wearing a mask and I'm riding down the street and I saw a friend of mine outside of her house and I, I waved hi and she's like, oh, hi. And then I, then I pulled down the mask so she could see. Oh, she's like, oh, Aaron, how are you? Like, you no idea who I am. Uh, yeah. It's, who is that man <laughs> exactly it's it's strange um i think you know one thing that i've noticed what i do a lot of times when i'm ending a zoom call i'll wave goodbye and it's it because i don't know or even when i'm seeing somebody in person i'll wave because i'm not shaking their hand i think that it is so interesting how society is being changed by this event absolutely yeah. absolutely in, in dramatically and suddenly and in some ways, maybe permanently. Uh, I had a friend comment recently that handshakes may be dead forever. They were stupid to begin with. And I thought, I don't know, I've never felt that way about them, but I can see a, you know, your point of view. It's like, I am not bearing a weapon and you are not bearing a weapon. Aha, it was in my left hand. You know, <laughs> what is, it's, a, it's an ancient custom um, and it, it, it seems to have worked for a really long time, but who knows? Maybe we're done. Maybe we're done with handshakes. I think we're... Go ahead. I think we're done with them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you as a photographer, um, you know, you're, you're thinking creatively. I mean, you're a creative. You're a musician. You, you do a lot uh, in the community. Um, you know, I even interviewed um, Lisa D recently, and I was on the Evanston Made web page and I see you're there and uh you know it's so you're you're such a creative here how have you been creative about how do you adjust your business I mean I think this is one of the examples right um yeah it's a, it's a work in progress um I have uh really had the doors closed to to uh new clients but um First of all, I had a, 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 a good amount of work in the pipeline, people who had been in for portrait sittings but had not yet uh, done a design consultation or placed orders, so they were able to keep revenue going for a little while. There's been a little bit of help from the government. Um, uh, a small business lender came through uh, with a line of credit. That's good. Uh, but this, 
what I'm what I'm seeing here, you know, it it hit me also this week that a lot of people I know are in creative fields, and whereas there is a lot of insecurity for people who relay r- rely on their creativity to make a living, creatives are in a much better position to pivot because we're constantly coming up with new ideas more than anyone can execute. And it's just, it's just where we live. So um, I saw, recognize this need really early on and had this aha moment when I thought, this is something I could do to make money. Um, it's something I'm already an expert. You know, it's not like I have to retrain if I were going to be a psychologist or something, go back to school. Uh, it's something I can do remotely from anywhere, which is one thing having a brick and mortar store um, doesn't have going for it. The idea that I could just like pull up and be doing this in Ontario for six months or, you know, California for six months, that it doesn't really work with a brick and mortar. So I'm looking at this. Initially, I was contacting people who um, I thought might benefit and might also, like you, talk about this. And I've been doing it uh, just as a service and not charging for it while figuring out whether or not it's something that people value enough to pay for. And I have set it up so that if people do a, a coaching session like this for me, what we're, we're calling lights camera meeting, um, that they can send me money. And if they do, uh, in keeping with my studio's kind of ethic, if they do send my, me money, we're donating a portion of that back to the um, uh, the organizations in Evanston that are helping people who are struggling most with, uh, with the crisis. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. My, my idea is that, uh, and I, and I, I, I started seeing potential for this more quickly than I expected to that I'll, I'll do this for someone privately and that that person may put me in touch with an organization that has deeper pockets and that it really has a need and is interested in getting all of their people up to speed in this with this technology. You know, you you mentioned when we started, you said I've been helping people with their backgrounds, but that's just it's one piece of it. Um, uh, camera placement is really important. Uh, lighting is very very important, but there's foreground lighting and background lighting, and those two things affect each other. Um, there's background, of course, as you mentioned, in terms of clutter. But there's also a little, there's, there's posture, your physical posture, where you appear in the frame, where you're looking, if you're looking at the camera, or if you're looking at the other person's picture like this, and all your people see is the top of your head. Right. So it's a little more comprehensive. Um, and I, so far, I found um, people seem to think that it has tremendous value. People have, uh, have been very grateful to see their images on at the end, as opposed to the, you know, in contrast with what they'd seen at the beginning. I agree. And, you know, one of the things that um, I thought was interesting was when we, we were doing a Zoom call like this, and then we FaceTimed with each other over our phones. So then you could see another angle of everything in the room. It was really, it's amazing what you could do with the technology, where you, if you're not even in the room with somebody, you can still figure all this stuff out. It, it's very uh, innovative. Yes. When, when, um, when people schedule a coaching session, I ask if they, if they have one available to secondary um, connection. And um, because when we're, we're like, if you're using your laptop for the Zoom meeting, we want to position that and get the angle of the screen just right, get the height of the computer just right. And I don't want them to have to pick that up and turn it around to show me what's behind them. So we'll, we'll work on that and then connect over their phone. And I'll say, you know, give, take me on a tour of your house. I, uh, this week, a woman just, just give me a 360 of the room. And I said, okay, you're sitting at exactly the wrong end of the table. You want to sit at the other end of the table because you have windows over there. You're doing this in the daytime. So there's, there's that element. And then a, a, another friend who's a, a professional caregiver, he's a psychologist who I was helping um, I had him take me on a tour of his house looking for other sources of light. Like, is there a lamp that we could unplug and put in your room? Cause he was going to be doing his session at night. And it, yeah, having these, I mean, this, the technology here is ex- 
incredible. It's ridiculous. It's incredible. And to be able to have two, you can have two different views of the same person in the same meeting. You know, it's like we're, we're lucky to, um, if we have to be going through something like this, to be going through it now rather than 20 years ago or, you know, 100 years ago and be where we live. I mean, we're very lucky. And, you know, I, I, I'm glad that um, we can do this. And I'm, I'm grateful that you're, um, you know, trying to get more of these sessions where you're donating to the causes in Evanston. I was, I was driving by a church yesterday and I know they do a, you know, a soup kitchen and they had a line all up and down the street. And uh, I've seen in other places in the area where that's been happening. Um, it's scary. It's, um, it's trying. It's, it's every, everything is just so heavy, you know? Um, so whatever we can do to help these people, all of us, I mean, we're, no one's spared, you know, let's, we, I, I'm so happy that we're able to bound together and to be innovative to help each other. I agree, Aaron. I agree. Yeah, we are, we are definitely very, very fortunate, you and I, living where we live. Um, there's, uh, I mean, this came on so suddenly. Uh, the, the the economy, the situation, uh, people's sense of security is a huge portion of the American population is suddenly insecure. Um, it, you know, it, it, it's just, well, like someone on the radio was saying, here I go again, using the word unprecedented. Because <laughs> there's no other word for it. Well, there, I'm sure there are, but that's very apt. We don't, yeah. it's all new. It's all new. Well, I think we got to stay creative um, and continue to do this. Do you have other ideas that you're thinking of with your photography that you, um, of how uh, to go about it in, you know, however long this, this goes on for? Well, yeah. Um, one idea, which is, is not new, I have, I have always done business portraits for people. Uh, it's, it's been a very, very small percentage of what I do, but when I started doing these uh, lights camera meeting consultations, I realized that people don't know that I, that my studio does business portraits and we do them really, really well. And it's just uh, dawned on me this week that I, I actually had a client in for a business portrait, even though I'm technically closed, because I realized that we, that's one thing I can do safely. When I'm working with families, with pets, it's much too hands-on. Yeah. I don't think it's time yet to have four or five people at a time through the studio or to be doing multiple sittings every day. But I can do business portraits. I can do one business portrait a day. We, we um, did three different backgrounds and a couple of uh, different outfits. Um, and we're able to maintain a safe distance the entire time. I kept a mask on. My client obviously did not uh, while we were shooting, but did at all the other times. And right. he had alcohol wipes and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of soap and water. So I think that that may open up for me before the family uh, work comes back. At least from my perspective, I will feel safe doing those before I'll feel safe having big groups in. I think it's going to be important that people do those business portraits, especially if you're looking for a job. Yeah. And yes, there's going to be a lot of changeover, a lot of changeover and a lot of people looking for jobs. So we're also looking at the possibility of, of doing some sort of piggyback. If, uh, if a client has a job and they're doing well, um, or feeling financially secure, then maybe their business portrait pays for, in part for a business portrait for someone who is unemployed. Hmm. It's just another idea we're looking at in, in a way to, to, you know, when this first started after my initial panic, um, I started thinking, what can I do? You know, I'm a photographer, I'm a portrait studio. What on earth can I do to help in this pandemic? I'm not a doctor, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm over 60. I don't exactly want to be on the front lines. Right. Um, so these things have come to me gradually, and I realize that there's 
there's going to be a lot of opportunity to help put things back together. And, and now, um, and one of my clients, actually I have two clients who uh, were both uh, doing these coaching sessions because they had new jobs and they had, they had, I mean, they had great new jobs, which is not what you're hearing from, from a lot of people. But uh, you know, in those cases, I was able to put them at ease about meeting their coworkers and employers for the first time in this medium, you know, these are people who might know how to put themselves together and present themselves physically, but suddenly when you're at home with a laptop that you're not that familiar with, dealing with things like lighting and shadows and focus and background, um, people feeling relatively helpless. And both of those people now will be able to step into their new jobs with a new, Im with a feeling confident, at least more confident about their image. Yeah, it's interesting to think about people starting new jobs during this time. My sister actually started a new job during this time. So I'm going to share this with her because I think, yeah, she's, that's how she's meeting her coworkers. It's, a, it's an interesting time. Where can people find uh, more information about how to schedule uh, these sessions with you? I, I don't really have an online presence for Lights Camera meeting yet, but Contact information is at suttonstudios.com. Um, you can always write manager at suttonstudios.com if you want to send an email, or just go to the website and look for the contact button and email us. Come in through Sutton Studios and we'll, we'll um, get you scheduled. Sounds great. David, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, I look forward to seeing some better uh, <laughs> backgrounds and lighting for a lot of people throughout the, uh, the community around the world. So thank you so much. Thank you, Aaron. It's been great talking to you.